What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. I have a few textbooks lying around the house, some on my desk and some on the shelf, and I thought why not just combine them and make a video. So I'm just gonna review some of the math and physics textbooks that I have, and let's just jump into it. So the first textbook is Quantum Mechanics by DJ Griffiths. Um, if you're in the United States, if you're studying physics, you obviously know who Griffiths is, or you will know who he is very soon, because he's just a tremendous uh, textbook writer, uh, he wrote a book on electrodynamics and on quantum mechanics, and he, other, he has another one on particle physics. So everyone knows who Griffiths is. He's the man, the myth, and the legend. So this book um, is an undergraduate textbook. It, uh, it's the book I use to learn quantum mechanics, and honestly, I found it a great book. It's very easy to pick up. It's uh, The language that it's written in is very smooth. My professor says, Griffiths is your friend. He walks with you, he talks with you, and then he hits you with a three-star problem, and then you start crying. So what this book basically goes through is your undergraduate quantum mechanics. So it start off um, introducing the wave function and some statistics to go along and probability theory. And then um, it goes through uh, just solving some simple examples of quantum mechanics. So basically it starts off with uh, the theory of the wave function and it solves some simple examples and then it moves on to the Schrodinger equation which is like Newton's second law but for quantum mechanics. And then you go through some formalism just building up uh, quantum mechanics and then at the end you solve the hydrogen atom which is um, the most famous example of quantum mechanics. Uh, and then after that you move on to part two which are applications. So most applications in quantum mechanics are not solvable exactly. You have to use approximation methods. And uh, Griffiths goes through um, some of the most popular approximation methods like perturbation theory, WKB approximations, uh, variational methods, stuff like that. And then at, towards the end of the book, he talks about scattering, which is a very important topic. And finally, he talks about there's a, a, a chapter on measurement and interpretation. Um, you know, quantum mechanics is notorious for being difficult to understand, but really it's not the, the theory that's hard to understand. I mean, most people who learn quantum mechanics are very comfortable doing calculations. What, what physicists mean when they talk about quantum mechanics is hard to understand is the interpretation of quantum mechanics. You know, what, what does it all mean? Why are the axioms of quantum mechanics sort of slightly different than what we, what we observe? So this book is uh, it's a great book. I think if you're learning quantum mechanics or if you're teaching yourself quantum mechanics, you should definitely get this book. All right, on to my other textbook, which is Quantum Field Theory by Peskin and Schroeder. So this book is a classic in the subject, quantum field theory. And everyone who is studying in the United States, if you ask them about Peskin and Schroeder, they know of this book. They might have not used it, but they know it exists because um, it's one of those classic textbooks that just everyone knows about. And what this book does is it talks about obviously quantum field theory, but what is quantum field theory? It's combining uh, special relativity uh, with uh, quantum mechanics. So if you just do regular quantum mechanics, you're not taking into account the relativistic effects. And it turns out that if you wanna do that, you have to come up with quantum field theory. So the first part of this book goes through quantum electrodynamics, and Feynman diagrams. So quantum electrodynamics is the theory of the interaction between uh, the electron and the photon. But it's basically electricity and magnetism, but at the quantum field theory level. And so this book is split up into three parts. So part two of the book is on renormalization. And what renormalization is, is the study of containing infinities. So it's very well known in quantum field theory that if you try to do some non-trivial calculations, you quickly end up with infinities coming all over the place. And um, this, this part is just dealing with these infinities. How do you contain them? How do you define your parameters in such a way that all the infinity, infinities cancel out? So that's the study of renormalization. And then finally, part three is on the non-abelian uh, gauge theories. So non-abelian just means that A times B is not the same as B times A. That's literally what it means. And once you drop that property, you end up with a completely new family of theories, which are known as non-abelian gauge theories. And then gauge theory refers to gauge symmetry. And I'm not gonna try and explain what gauge symmetry is, uh, but if you do wanna understand that, uh, go to Joe Rogan's podcast. He has like three physicists try to explain to him what gauge theory is and uh, see your luck over there. 
Okay, so that's it for quantum field theory. Um, if you're trying to study quantum field theory by yourself, honestly, I wouldn't recommend this book. It's uh, a bit um, on the advanced side. Uh, it is an introduction, but if you're just trying to dive in by yourself without a professor teaching the class um, and offering homework problems, then this is gonna be a hard um, way to teach yourself quantum field theory. Instead, what I do recommend is going online and searching for David Tong's um, physics notes, which I will also link down in the description. And if you want to learn quantum field theory that way, I think that's the right way to start. So that's it for my physics textbooks. Yes, that's all the physics textbooks that I have. Um, most of my physics textbooks are actually uh, on my laptop and I like to read them as PDFs because I don't like to carry physical copies. So now I'm going to move on to my math textbooks. And the first book is Understanding Analysis by Stephen Abbott. And this book is about analysis and what analysis is, is uh, you've taken calculus before, uh, presumably, and if you have, then you remember learning about functions and continuity. You know, if I can draw a function without taking my hand off the paper, that's a continuous function. You've learned about derivatives, which is the instantaneous rate of change of your function. So you've learned all that in calculus, or hopefully you will learn it. Uh, but this book talks about how to build uh, calculus from the foundations. And that's what the study of analysis is, is to start with the axioms and set theory and try to build up what calculus really is. So as, uh, as an exercise for you, go ahead and prove that the square root of two is an irrational number. So this book first starts off by talking about the real numbers and it introduces sequences and series, and then it quickly dives into uh, topology. And topology is basically the study of uh, the properties of sets. So sets, you can define properties of them like connectedness. There's a connected set. You can define openness of a set. Um, you can define a property known as closeness of a set. So there are all these properties of sets that you can define in analysis and they're crucial to understanding calculus. Without these notions of set theory uh, and topology, you basically can't do any calculus. So that's why these are introduced. And then you start talking about functions and continuity and limits. And then you dive into the derivative number five and you learn about the derivative from an actual formal standpoint so the idea is we're defining um, what it actually means to take a derivative and the way to do it is through these things called epsilon and delta uh, definitions and it turns out that if you want to prove everything in calculus um, then you have to start with these definitions of the epsilon delta definitions uh, if you look at newton's calculus or leibniz's calculus they didn't actually have full proofs of everything. They relied on intuition. But then um, a guy named Cauchy came in and he sort of reformulated all of this. And now it's called analysis. So it's a highly recommended book. The reason I have this book is because when I was an undergrad, I double majored in physics and math. And so part of my math degree was to take a course on analysis. And this was the book we used. Honestly, it's a great read. I recommend it for anyone who's just uh, learning analysis. Uh, maybe you're learning analysis uh, through Rudin. That book is, is pretty hard, but this one is a softer introduction. I would definitely recommend it. Okay, so now we move on to the other textbook, which is Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces. Um, and what this basically means is Advanced Linear Algebra. And uh, this book, will, I sort of have a love-hate relationship with it because although I learned a lot about Advanced Linear Algebra, um, the class itself was... Uh, so the contents of this book are basically your regular linear algebra stuff that you learn. Um, so, but it starts off with the foundations again. It starts from the axioms of what a vector space is, what a field is, and then you sort of build up linear algebra. And so the, the here's a table of contents. You start with spaces and then a bunch of things that are listed. And then you talk about linear transformations. And finally, you talk about orthogonality and then there's a segue into analysis, which is pretty cool. So this uh, high-level textbook is Advanced Linear Algebra. I do not recommend it uh, if you're just learning linear algebra. You should wait until you learn some advanced topics, then you can move on to something like this. All right, so finally I have um, this book, which is on partial differential equations. It's called Elementary Applied Partial Differential Equations by Richard Habermann. And the reason I have this book is because in undergrad, I had to take a PDEs course and we used this book, which was, honestly, it was a great read. I loved reading this book and solving some of the problems in it. 
Uh, and what it, what it is basically is once you're done with ordinary differential equations, that's when people typically stop uh, learning about differential equations. But if you're in physics, you're going to learn about partial differential equations, especially in classes like electrodynamics. So I just took PDEs because I thought it would be very uh, useful for physics, which, which it is. So you start off with the heat equation, which is a classic example of a partial differential equation because it includes derivatives with respect to time and space. So you start off with the heat equation and then he introduces ways of solving uh, a partial differential equation like methods of separation of variables and he talks about Fourier series and then he moves on to numerical methods on how to actually uh, code all of this stuff because uh, if you're an engineer um, you want to know how to convert your theory into uh, your code even if you're a physicist you want to know how to do that and this book helps you convert this partial differential equation stuff into uh, code. It also includes chapters on uh, Green's functions. Green's functions are going to be your nightmare probably most likely if you're taking graduate level electrodynamics or they might be your best friend. So depending on how you learn uh, about Green's functions they could either be the best thing in the world or the worst thing in the world. So, but I learned Green's function from this book and it was actually not that bad. So highly recommend this book if you want a, a solid understanding of partial differential equations. So that's pretty much it. These are the textbooks that I have. And yeah, that's, um, I don't typically carry around physical textbooks. All of my textbooks are PDFs on my computer, uh, but I do have some other tech, some other books that are not textbooks. So if you'd like to see those, um, let me know in the comments. So I'll make a separate video on the non-textbook books that I have. And uh, those ones I have a lot more than the just the textbooks because typically textbooks you can easily find online. Whereas um, your other textbooks, I just like to buy the physical copy. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments what books you have, what textbooks you have. Um, if you're going to get one of these books, if you have any questions about them, let me know in the comments. And as always, hit that subscribe button if you still haven't. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.